Hey everybody, thank you so much for not another one of my interviews here at CPAC, my show, William Wallace for America. With me today is Penny Nance. She's the president and CEO of Concerned Women for America. Penny, thank you so much for coming on today. Great being here, thank you. Well, I tell you what, you're an amazing woman for doing, for fighting for our freedoms in our country. I don't think that that everybody, it amazes me how many people don't know about everybody who's doing that, but you're one of those that's fighting hard for our country. So tell, tell us a little bit about Concerned Women for America. So CWA is Concerned Women for America. It's the nation's largest public policy women's organization. In our collegiate chapters, we have 195 um, college chapters around the country. Um, we call them Young Women for America. And so we are the women who are pro-life, um, and unapologetically so, and we're fighting for our children, parental control of education, fighting the issue of sexual exploitation, um, and, and fighting for religious freedom. And then the final thing is uh, the issue of supporting the U.S.-Israel relationship. So the, we have seven core issues. We'd love for you to come to ConcernWomen.org and learn more about that. But we are active in public policy on the federal level. We, have, we are lobbying in Washington on the state level and in the local level. And then, of course, we do a lot of media trying to comment on the culture. We are the women that um, love our country, love our families, and are you know fighting for the next generation? This and is amazing. It's and it's and we're training others. So really, the key is you've got this army of women, the Esters of this generation, who are you know busy with their family and their children, and or maybe they're young and single and and working. Right. Um. And but they want to be active. They want to actually have an opportunity to say in their in the leadership of their nation. So we are ready to train them and bring them alongside and help them when those hard conversations come up, whether it's, you know, in media or whether it's like just on the right, playground, exactly, right. that you know, they know what to say. They're never caught looking at their shoes. I think it's so tragic when faithful women, they know what's true. They have a biblical worldview, but they can't enter into the conversation because they just don't want to say. It's tragic when a woman gets has to look at her shoes because she doesn't really have the language or the stats right. or the training. And so we're here to train them, we train you to speak into the the moment and to be able to lead. It sounds to me like you're uh, like not only are you protecting freedoms for women in our country, it sounds to me like you're empowering women. That's right. That's right, because you know I really think if you're going to make change, really multi generational change, exactly, you have to help women lead and help them again to understand what's happening and to be able to speak into it. So we have a a, a weekly email that goes out. It's very simple. It's very short. Mm -hmm. it's, and if you want to click into it and go deeper, but if you just want a few talking points of what's happening that week, and you know. Washington right. or in your state, so we tell people to come sign up at ConcernedWomen.org and we'll give you sort of the top lines of what's happening, what you need to know. You know what I think is important to point out, and I'm, I'm, I'm not only do I love the fact that you're empowering women, but a lot of people, look. the argument was made one time, somebody said, I, something I overheard yeah. in another, another interview about why women make better leaders. Mm. Because women are conservative in nature, yeah. women are caregivers, yeah. they're, they're more, they're loving, they're compassionate, mm -hmm. but also, we also know how fierce, and I don't mean that in a bad way, yes. women can be, and that and when a, a woman right. is empowered, she is able to be able to use all of those qualities yes. in such a way that it guides her in some important decisions. Well, and that, what I'll say is, you know, we are conservative women. That means we're the women that love men. And we want strong men, and we want men that lead, but also we know that uh, messenger matters, and sometimes God, you know, empowers women that we are supposed to lead on a spe specific issue and I would say that about the issue of abortion I would say on the issue the transgender issue where you have men taking away the trophies of young women our young women for America leaders are testifying and right. state capitals around the country because this matters to them and so it is very important but I you know again I I always say it's the esters of this generation it's important to raise up the the, the esters because God is saying, for such a time as this, we were born 
right now is no surprise to God what's happening in the families that he you know, put us in, in right. our country. And so we, we need to live up to that anointing. And, and it is an anointing, it's very powerful. And to your point about women being fierce, we're gonna protect our young. Right, exactly. At all costs, we're gonna protect our young. Yeah, I meant that good way, so, right. So whether you're a mom or a grandmother or aunt, you know, you understand you have those those children, or, or maybe it's just in your church, the young people in your church, you're gonna protect the ones you love at any cost to you. We will never, ever shrink from the fight because we must lead, we must protect the next generation. You know what's interesting? You brought up that how women's sports and how women's sports are being stolen. Basically, you know, I think women are are, are the most, well, I won't say unique, you know, but what well, I'm... We say that. There's a unique dignity for women. They're, they're, oh, you it's said not it like men and women are interchangeable. Right. Right? It's not. Our parts are not God interchangeable. Created, God created yeah. us, and not just, you know, physically but in every single way like god made us we all are unique equal, but we're unique and exactly we are proud of that difference we embrace that difference we are grateful that god made us to be women and we don't take it lightly when someone steals our identity right? and, what, and, and it's stolen valor we've been women our whole lives and let's be honest since the fall it's harder to be a woman and so we understand the challenges and we uh, appreciate how hard it is. And when the when USA Today picks Rachel Levine as Woman of the Year, I mean, I'm sorry, right. we're a little, we're exactly. a little offended. You're taking away, you're taking women well, away from and, the equation. And, okay, let's set aside whether Rachel Levine is a man, is a woman or not. Even if Rachel Levine is a woman, she's only been one for about ten right. minutes. Okay, right. <laughs> and you know the women that for our whole lives have fought for our nation. I mean, we have women warriors that have done incredible things in fighting for our nation. The hurdles you know, that women have had leaders. to overcome. I mean, yet Rachel is, Levine gets our title. Like, I'm not okay that's, with that. That's that, that, that part of our society. I agree with you because I think that part is putting another roadblock for women today. And you all have you all have to fight for more things than yes. most people in yes. our civilization. Yes. And now you have to make another fight to prove that you're actually, you know, well, I mean, you know, Title IX, which is it, Title IX in education, gave women the opportunity to compete in sports. And so that meant that, you know, equal money was spent in our sports programs and education, and that meant that there were scholarships available for women and all kinds of opportunity. But when those slots are given to men, then there's no longer women's sports. It doesn't work the other way right, around, exactly. right? There's not men... There's not women that are trying out for the men's team. That's not happening. Right, men exactly. are coming over. People like Leah Thomas are coming over and taking our trophies, Division One. You know, we we have women leaders that competed against Leah Thomas in Division One swimming, and he's six foot whatever. Exactly. And you know, and stronger and bigger, bigger lungs, bigger mm -hmm. heart, better oxygenated blood. Shocker. Exactly. Shocker, he won, you know, and so um, the idea that that's fair, that is not fair play. So you want fairness. So you're mobilizing women. I'm going to ask you a, a, a two more questions to ask you, but you're mobilizing women on, I want you to go over again the seven, the principles that yes. you had in the beginning we talked about because I love the fact that I think we need, I often think we need to repeat things sometimes yes. because now that people heard how passionate you are about things, what are the founding principles well, of I mean, concerned the, women? The bottom line is, you know, we have seven core issues because you can't do everything. Exactly. But, but you know, we started out with six. The seventh was support for Israel. Okay. That, that became, we, we adopted that as a key issue during the Obama administration when so much was happening, so much, you know, there was another intifada, so much was going on, uh, you know, in, in, in terrorism against Israel. Right. And the Obama administration had no respect and no interest in, in work walking alongside her. You know, that is our country that the U.S.-Israel relationship it's is sacred. Is sacred. And it's, it's our closest ally in the Middle East and the only other democracy in the Middle right. East. Like, I don't know why they don't get that. But, um, you know, and aside from that, we, and so all along since 79, we've had these other issues. So number one is support for life. You know, understanding that life is sacred and supporting the life from conception to natural death. So that means in both sides of the spectrum, you know, that the unique 
individual little baby in the womb to the elderly person who you know is at the end of her life. Exactly. We want to protect all of them. And then uh, support for local control, parental control of education. We're working for ESAs, Educational Savings Account, which basically is a debit card for parents. You can take with it with you where you want to take it. All the right? money that state would be spending that a parent can choose where the kid goes. Um, so the issue is sexual exploitation. We have worked very hard. That would be like sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And another issue that people don't really know a lot about is um, the backlog of DNA rape kits, the testing of rape kits. There's hundreds of thousands of those that need to be cleared up. We have made a lot of strides, and CWA has worked very hard on the Debbie Smith Act, working for Senate Judiciary Committee. We spent a, the country spent about a billion dollars in that, and it's important because if you're a victim, there you know there's most states there's a time limit um, on when you can actually you know catch a prosecutor and, and right. prosecute excuse sorry, catch a predator yeah, and yeah, prosecute yeah, yeah. them. You know what I was saying, um, and then uh, you know the issue of um, national sovereignty. I mean, we are a sovereign nation. Exactly. We do not have to kowtow to the UN or anyone else. Or the WHO. Right. Exactly. exactly. Um, and then I don't know what number that is, but I think and religious freedom, and religious certainly, freedom. and which you know many of these issues are uh, inter dispersed among each other, are, are connected, and so one issue, you know, uh, for instance, education and religious freedom. And, we, and, and you use all of these things to not only empower women, or in the process of empowering women, women, but you're also protecting freedom for all Americans right. in our country. Right. One last question, because we start wrapping up here in a second, is. Uh, we, I, I always believe freedoms are under attack in America. What do you think are the is the number one reason or, or what number one way freedoms are under attack in America? I think parental rights is, I mean, there's so many things that you could say right. about that. But one of the things I am most worried about is that we have allowed um, the wolf into the hen house. You know, we have allowed... Um, the left to creep into our classrooms and take control of our children's education. And I think parents have woken up to this, which is why we have five states that have passed educational Absolutely. savings accounts and we're going to have more. Um, but it is essential that we take back our authority as parents and protect our children and no longer cede the rights to the state that God gave us and keep our children safe and innocent from people that are frankly predators. Exactly. Thank you for fighting. Once yeah. again, what's the website? Concernwomen.org. Come I love join it. us. We'd love to give you information. Sign up for our email. Penny Nance, thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody else, please share this video. Look into Concerned Women for America. You won't be disappointed. They're fighting for our freedoms. They're fighting for your freedoms. And we need to help them any way that we can. Thank you all so much and have a great day.